गिरिवरधारे यशोदनंदन ब्रजजन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रजजन रंजन यमुना तेरा वनचारे यमुना तेरा वनचारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपे जन्म वल्लभ गिरिवरधारे जय गोपे जन्म वल्लभ गिरिवरधारे यशोदनंदन ब्रजजन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रजजन रंजन यमुना तेरा वनचारे यमुना तेरा वनचारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंसा परिव्रज कचार्य अष्टतर शत शिशिमात अभाय चरण रविंद भक्ति वेदंत स्वामी शिल प्रभुपाद की जय इस्कॉन प्रतिष्ठा का चार्य शिला प्रभुपाद की जय नमा चार्य शिला हरिदास ठाकुर की जय ब्रह्म से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासुदे गौर वक्त वृंद की जय जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोपाल गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंद राधा कुंद गिरि गोवर्धन की जय जय श्री श्री राधा माधव शाखी वृंद की जय श्री श्री पंच तत्व की जय नरसिंह देव भगवान की जय भक्तराज पलद महाराज की जय जय जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्र माई की जय श्री मायापुर धाम की जय शिव वृंदावन धाम की जय गंगा माई की जय यमुना माई की जय ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की जय समवेद गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय नीताय गौ प्रेमानंदे हरे हरि वो अ ग्लोरिस्त दी असेंबल द वोटिस हरे कृष्ण अ ग्लोरिस्त दी असेंबल द वोटिस हरे कृष्ण O glories to the assembled devotees, Hare Krishna. O glories, O glories to Shri Shri Guru and Gauranga. O glories to Srila Prabhupada.
this is there? Seven. So, reading from Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 22, Text 6 and 7. Tenaham nigrihitos me. Bhavata bhuri karmanaha. Badhascha varunai pashair. Nativri de nacha viate. Naham nigrito nigrihitos me Bhavata buri karmana Badascha varuna impasyair Nativrite nacha iviate Naham nigrikitos me Bhavata buri karmana Badascha varunai pashair Nati vridena chavyate Tenaham nigrihitos me Bhavata buri karmana Badascha varunai pasyai Nativri de nachavyate Naham nigrihitos me Bhavata buri karmana Badascha varunai pasyair Nati vridhe na chavyate Naham nigrihitos mi Bhavata buri karmana Badascha varuna pasyair Nati vridhe na chavyate Tenaham nigrihitos me Bhavata buri karmana Badascha varanai pasyai Nati vridhe na chavyate Tenaham nigrihitos me Bhavata buri karmana Ascha varunai pasyai Nati vrite na chavyate Matajis Tenaham nigrihitos me Tenaham nigrihitos me Bhavata buri karmana Badascha varuna payasyai Yasmin Unto you, Vaira Anubandhena, by continuously treating as an enemy, Vyudhena, firmly fixed by such intelligence, Vibhudha Itaraha, the demons, 
those other than the demigods. Bahavaha, many of them, the Labhire achieved, Siddhim, perfection, Yam, which, Uha, it is well known, Ekanta Yoginaha. equal to the achievements of the greatly successful mystic yogis. Tena, therefore, aham, I, nigrihitaha, asmi, although I am being punished, Bhavata, by your lordship, Bhurikanamana, who can do many wonderful things. Baddhacha, I am arrested and bound. Varunai Pashaihi, by the ropes of Varuna. Naati vride. I'm not at all ashamed of this. Nacheviate. Nor am I suffering very much. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Abhay Charanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Translation. Many demons who are continuously inimical towards you, finally achieve the perfection of great mystic yogis. Your Lordship can perform one work to serve many purposes, and consequently, although you are punished me, although you have punished me in many ways, I do not feel ashamed of having been arrested by the ropes of Varuna, nor do I feel aggravated. Purport. Bali Maharaj appreciate the Lord's mercy not only upon him but upon so many other demons because this mercy is liberate, liberately distributed by the Supreme Personality by the Supreme Lord the Supreme Lord is called all merciful Bali Maharaj was indeed a fully surrendered devotee but even some demons who were not at all devotees but merely enemies of the Lord attained the same exalted position position achieved by many mystic yogis. Thus, Bali Maharaj could understand that the Lord had some hidden purpose in punishing him. Consequently, he was neither unhappy nor ashamed because of the awkward position in which he, was, in which he had been put by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So here in this uh, verse, Bali Maharaj is as expressing his mind. So oh, Bali Maharaj has come to the position which is aspired by all the devotees and uh, many transcendentalists. Bali Maharaj has come to the position of surrender unto the Supreme Personality of, God, of Godhead. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Sarva Dharman Parityaja, Mam Ekam Sharanam Vraja, that one should give up all kinds of religion and simply surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, this is the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the essence of Vedic literature. Uh, it, is the, it is sometimes referred to as Gita Upanishad. Upanishads are the essence of all Vedic literature. And Bhagavad Gita is uh, one of the Upanishads. It's considered to be equal to one of the Upanishads, which means that it teaches us or presents the essence of Vedic literature. So when one uh, studies the Vedas, 
and follows the Vedas. As a result of that, then one develops faith in Lord Vishnu. The Vedic culture, Vedic literature is uh, compiled in, and composed in such a way that no matter uh, what uh, path of life you come from, uh, what kind of conditioned nature you have, if you follow the Vedic literature, if you follow Vedic culture, sooner or later you will develop faith in Lord Vishnu. You will develop understanding that Lord Vishnu is the supreme personality of God, that he's the origin of everything. Then one engages in a regulated devotional service. And the result of regulated devotional service is coming to the platform of surrender, of Sharanagati. Uh, the process given to us by Srila Prabhupada, the uh, process of deity worship, the process of sadhana bhakti, is meant to help us to come to the process of full surrender. This is the purpose of following the rules and regulations of devotional service, so that we can come to this platform, uh, we can achieve this attitude, the mood, and the mindset which is here expressed by Bali Maharaj, that we become fully surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, uh, how do we understand that Bali Maharaj is surrendered? Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna asks Krishna, he says, one who has attained a transcendental position, how does such person sit? How does he walk? How does he speak? He's asking about the symptoms. Uh, so Srila Prabhupada explains that a person can be understood by uh, symptoms. Uh, what kind of person a person is can be understood by analyzing various symptoms such person is manifesting. And he says just as a wealthy person, you can understand that he's a wealthy person by not seeing some symptoms. Yeah, he's got some uh, expensive clothing, he's uh, traveling in a certain way, he's uh, staying in a certain places, uh, he's carrying himself in a certain way. A sick person also can be understood uh, by certain symptoms. Uh, maybe pale skin or circle under his eyes or whatever the doctors uh, see, whatever symptoms they see when they observe a sick person, they understand the symptoms. So similarly, a person situated on a spiritual platform or a person who has attained the platform of surrender to the Lord can also be understood uh, by certain symptoms. So those symptoms of full surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead are being manifested by Bali Maharaj in these verses. So firstly, Bali Maharaj is not lamenting or is not complaining. Uh, we see that Bali Maharaj has come to the platform that he has given up Sarva Dharma, all kinds of religions, and he has simply surrendered to the Lord. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita explains that for a Kshatriya, for a king, nothing is worse than dishonor. They would rather die than be dishonored. So Bali Maharaj, not long ago, he became the most powerful uh, king of the universe. He has conquered the demigods, uh, he's been ruling the world, he's been getting all respect from all sides, all his enemies has fled from him, uh, so he has attained this very, very exalted status and now he's laying down bound like an animal. Uh, very uncomfortable situation uh, for somebody like that, a kshatriya, a king, a warrior, and not only that, uh, he has been tricked into it. It's not that he lost an honest contest and then uh, as a result of that he has been defeated. No, he has been tricked, he has been cheated. And not that he has been cheated and tricked by somebody very powerful, he has been tricked by a dwarf, child. Uh, so when it comes to uh, disgrace and shame, uh, there could be many, many things he could be 
ashamed and very unhappy about, feel very dishonored, but he doesn't have those feelings. He doesn't complain, uh, saying, well, you've cheated me, you're supposed to be the personification of religion and dharma, I've done everything right, I've kept my word, I've this everything you asked me to do, and what do I get as a result of that? I lose everything. Ah, you take everything away from me, and not only uh, proper way, you take by trickery away from me. And look, these other people, those demons, who are your enemies, who disgrace you, who, uh, who have offended you many times, you're giving mercy to them, and you're not giving mercy to me. What is this? Uh, he could feel like this. If he would be analyzing this whole situation by my then religious principles, by the principles of Artha, Dharma, Kama, or Moksha, then he would have many reasons to be dissatisfied and many reasons to complain. And, uh, well, he could bloop even, I guess, as uh, many of us would have done in a situation where we engage in spiritual, religious activities, and then at the end of the day, Dharma eva rakshate, that the religion is supposed to be protecting us, satya eva jayate, religion was supposed to be always victorious, we are always supposed to get some benefit by following it, and here, the opposite, he loses everything. And not only that, he's humiliated, he even loses his freedom. But Bali Maharaj is not doing that. Bali Maharaj is appreciating uh, Vamanadev. And not only that, he glorifies him. And he's not feeling any discomfort, as normally a king or a kshatriya would. So, uh, uh, these are the various symptoms of surrender. Uh, Shila uh, Prabhupada explains in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya various symptoms of the surrendered soul. So, a surrendered soul always accepts everything what is favorable to devotional service and rejects everything that is unfavorable. So Bali Maharaj here, uh, he, since the Supreme Personality has arranged that situation for him, he accepts it to be favorable. He thinks this is a good situation. This will, I don't understand how, it is beyond my comprehension, he says, but somehow or another this is good. This somehow serves the purpose of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sometime, somehow or other, by his causeless mercy, the Lord is engaging me in devotional service. Uh, maybe in a very unusual way, but nonetheless, the Lord is accepting uh, me as his servant and is having some plan I don't, may not understand. Uh, he also appreciates that the Lord not only has given mercy to him, but has given the mercy to others. And, uh, seeing that he's even more inspired to be surrendered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, says that the Lord, how can somebody not surrender to the Supreme Lord? The Supreme Lord is so kind that Putana, the sis sister of Bakasura, has come to him in a disguise of a nurse and she tried to kill her and poison her. But he, out of his causeless mercy, accepted her as his mother. So that kind of person, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is. So how can one not surrender to such a personality of Godhead? Uh, so Bali Maharaj is, although he is bound and helpless, he cannot protect himself anymore. He sees the Lord as his protector, as the most kind person. He sees the Lord as his maintainer. Uh, when you're bound, you cannot, you, there's no question of you maintaining yourself. When you are imprisoned in the position of Bali Maharaj, you cannot really take care of yourself by Bali Maharaj. sees very, very nicely and understands nicely that the Lord will maintain him, the Lord will protect him. Uh, he also understands that whatever desires he may have had in the past, uh, those desires can be only satisfied and uh, he can only attain ha any type of happiness if his desires are aligned with those of the Lord. Uh, that there is no point, no meaning to 
having independent desires of the Lord, from the Lord. And finally, he is manifesting ultimate humility. Uh, if he's fully dependent of the Lord, uh, just like a child uh, is always fully dependent of the Lord. A humility in the context of surrender to the Lord means that devotee understands that he cannot do anything independently from the Lord. Just like a small child is afraid to go out of the house without their parents. There is a certain amount of dependence on the parents. They are afraid to do anything without the sanction, without the support, without the presence of their uh, parents. So that kind of humility is being manifested here, though uh, he does not understand. Uh, this is something, the whole situation as he is expressing, he doesn't know. The Lord has some plan, he doesn't know what the plan of the Lord is, but he has no desire to control and enjoy this material energy. Uh, when we have a desire to control and enjoy, then the big understanding of what's going on is very, very important because only through knowledge then we can control. Therefore, people like to learn, people like to educate themselves, people like to get degrees, because more you know, more you can do, more you can control. But Prahlad Maharaj doesn't understand, and he's not even trying to understand. He simply depends on the Supreme Personality of God and having a, a absolute faith in that whatever the Lord has arranged for him, whatever the situation is, is ultimately beneficial for him. Uh, so he's not feeling any distress. He's feeling jubilant, in fact. Uh, he finds himself to be very, very fortunate to be in this unfortunate situation. So uh, this is what uh, is happening here. Mali Maharaj is appreciating the Lord. Uh, he's expressing uh, his admiration for the wonderful qualities of the Lord, that the Lord is not only benefiting him with his mercy, but he's benefiting others. He's manifesting all the symptoms of surrender. His guru has been telling him not to do certain things, but he had rejected Shukracharya. Uh, he has embraced devotional service. He has taken the shelter of the Lord and uh, simply uh, feels satisfied in this difficult situation. He does not feel any discomfort. He's indifferent to the material situation. So this is the uh, very, very wonderful and very exalted uh, position that all devotees should be aspiring for. This is the uh, teaching of Bhagavad Gita that we should follow the devotional process with that aspiration to, the com to come to that platform of surrender, because when we come to the platform of surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it means that one can develop a dynamic relationship with the Lord. Uh, devotional service becomes uh, fully, uh, or comes to the platform and devotional service can fully manifest. So this is what is uh, recommended here by, and shown by practical example by Bali Maharaj. So, some uh, questions or comments on this wonderful shloka? Yes, Maharaj Thank you very much. Haribo. Yeah, so it shows that <coughs> Bali Maharaj has unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord. So as devotees, how can we acquire that faith that it will be for his own benefit or Lord has a plan. So it shows that he has the faith. Thank you. So Mataji is pointing out that Bali Maharaj, he has this unflinching faith and uh, therefore he can have this attitude. However, as a devotee, it's not necessary we always have that kind of strong faith. Sometimes uh, 
and uh, quite often, in fact, uh, in situations like that, then the opposite happens, that uh, we become, uh, we distance ourselves from the Lord, uh, we distance ourselves from devotional service, uh, uh, and uh, become uninspired in devotional service. Uh, Bali Maharaj is very inspired the way he speaks, he's really inspired. <laughs> Uh, this, for a king, uh, just a most unfortunate situation as far as uh, being a king is concerned. You lost everything, and you not only lost everything, you lost including your own freedom. And he's very inspired by this situation. But uh, uh, for those who have, do not have that kind of strength of fight when these things happen, then uh, well, often the opposite happens. So how do how can we develop this? Uh, sort of a strength of faith that when those things happen and those things do happen to us i mean maybe not every day but regularly <laughs> something happens where uh, uh, we feel that may perhaps this is not right this shouldn't be happening and then we become disturbed and instead our chanting and our sadhana becoming stronger then it becomes uh, weaker in uh, Vedic uh, literature, it is described, obviously, a lot about the nature of faith. Uh, Madhurya Kadambini talks about the nature of the faith very nicely from beginning, uh, from uh, Shraddha to Prema, the gradual development of faith is described in a great detail. In other places, uh, in uh, Shrutis, we also find how the opposite of faith, or Ashraddha, lack of faith, uh, is born. So, uh, there's an interesting story that there were those Brahmins, Yagic Brahmins, and they were performing a sacrifice. And they were doing everything right. They were following Dharma, following the process of religion in a perfect way. They did everything right. Except one thing, they made one mistake. And, because they made that mistake, they did not get the result they were expecting. Hmm. Because we can follow the rules and regulations given by the scriptures, but the faith, the amount of faith we have, they may be different. Sometimes we follow rules and regulations not because of appreciation and love or bhakti for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but we follow them because of some other motivation. Uh, this is called as Mishra Bhakti. Uh, we either uh, have uh, Karma Mishra Bhakti, we follow religion and we expect that there will be some improvement in the material situation, that the pain of material existence, the different difficulties which are there, they will be removed, um, that our situation will be better, we get a nice wife, a nice husband, and children will behave nicely because we're doing all the right things. Uh, we go to the temple, uh, and we, you know, we follow religion very nicely, so therefore there should be good results. So, and, but we try to also at the same time to please the Supreme Lord. Again, Amishra Bhakti also is there that we uh, follow the rules and regulations of the scriptures to become free from the material bondage to become purified and become liberated. So these Yagic Brahmans, they were performing karma. Uh, they were not trying to please the Supreme Lord. They were trying to get some material benefit by following religious uh, process, by following the scriptures. So when they did not get the result they expected, they became atheists. They gave up faith. They became faithless. They thought, well, we did everything right. We followed the words of the... Lord, we follow the, Lord's, the words of the scriptures, and we didn't get the result we wanted, and they lost um, their faith. So, uh, one of the first and most important things to be always uh, strong in Krishna consciousness is to follow in the footsteps of the devotees who are free from influence of karma and jnana. Uh, to, we should always try to inspire, to associate and follow in the footsteps of pure devotees. Because pure devotees, they are unflinching, just like Bali Maharaj. Oh, he's unflinching. 
Very unfortunate, materially speaking, a bad situation has happened to him, but he did not lose his faith. The opposite, his faith in the Lord has increased as he's manifesting, he's appreciating the Lord, say, wow, you're so wonderful. I understand you have given some benefit to me. I'm the great grandson of Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj was a devotee. You know, there's maybe some reason why I'm getting mercy, but those demons, how is that possible? So he went appreciating the Lord uh, more. Uh, secondly, uh, faith uh, and uh, not being distracted is very, very helpful if we study the philosophy. Because the nature of the mind is such that it fluctuates. Eh? Emotions with human beings are not rational beings at the very basis. We are emotional beings. Eh? There's always some feeling, some attitude uh, we have towards uh, the creation, towards our living entities, towards the Lord, etc. And those are not stable they fluctuate depending on the different situation, depending on what happens to us. We sometimes feel more inspired, we sometimes feel less inspired, it's sometimes we feel uh, very enthusiastic, sometimes we feel disheartened, and so on and so forth. Uh, so the mind by its very nature is not stable. And that's a good thing also in devotional service, as we see there's, in, we read in Krishna book, there's so many different pastimes uh, because that mind is like that. Uh, the Lord uh, can interact with the devotees in so many different ways because uh, devotees do have different feelings. However, on a condition platform, that becomes somewhat problematic because our feelings, they may be uh, positive towards devotional service or less positive towards devotional service. We feel more inspired or less inspired in devotional service. Liberated souls, they always inspire. It's just the inspiration manifests in a different way. Uh, in a conditioned state, then it is not necessary like that. So in Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada explains that by studying this transcendental philosophy and becoming free from all doubts, then one can control one's mind and one can be steady and, and fixed in one's faith. So therefore, by studying philosophy, one can become very, very fixed. And we see uh, those great liberated souls here in Bhagavatam, it's so many different things happen to them. They always speak some philosophy. They understand what is happening. Philosophically speaking, they understand. And then even here, Prahlad Maharaj, he uh, Bali Maharaj, he understands this is a supreme personality of Godhead. God, by definition, means whatever he does is good for everybody. It's that simple. So I may not understand exactly the detail of what's going on, but I understand he's the Supreme Lord. So therefore, although this situation maybe appears to be unfavorable, it is actually favorable. So he has that understanding. Yeah? He has that understanding. He knows the tatwa. That's why a devotee is always a great philosopher. An advanced devotee automatically uh, knows philosophy very, very well. So for us, studying the philosophy becomes very, very important because with intelligence, uh, through philosophical understanding, with intelligence, then we can uh, control our emotions. So even in difficult situations, then we can take shelter of the philosophy and rationally understand why something is happening and in that way protect our faith. But if the faith is simply based on a sentiment, when the sentiment changes, then the faith becomes very, very vulnerable. Uh, so therefore, Srila Prabhupada said that uh, religion without philosophy is a sentiment and sentiments change. And philosophy without religion is a mental speculation. It's just dry intellectuality. But the bhakti means using one's head and one's heart together. It combines the yoga process. We combine. Uh, we understand. We try to establish ourselves in the Sambandha Gyan, in the understanding of our relationship with the Lord. And we practice devotional service. We also not only try to understand, but we also try to develop that attitude of somebody who has a relationship with the Lord. And in that way, then it becomes very, very 
balanced. So that's what we should try to do. We should try to uh, study philosophy. We should try to become strong in understanding of Krishna consciousness. Everything happens for the reason. And all the reasons are explained in uh, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So if we know the reasons, then things will not disturb us. Then besides that, also very, very important that we practice devotional service. Devotional service itself uh, protects our faith. Because generally speaking, our faith is in things which give us some sort of solace, some sort of satisfaction, some sort of happiness. So if we are practically engaged in devotional service, and we get satisfaction for serv from serving under the order of spiritual master and the acharyas and other authorities, then we feel satisfied. So even if materially something happens which is maybe difficult or not satisfying, it doesn't bother us because our happiness is somewhere else. And just like uh, there is a war in Syria, I guess still going on, I think. Yeah? It doesn't really bother us here. Oh, this is war summer, it doesn't really bother so much because nothing to do with us. But if there will be war in uh, Swarovganj or uh, somewhere nearby here, then naturally we'll be a little bit more concerned and a little bit more disturbed and insecure. So uh, when we learn to distance ourselves from material concept of life by absorbing ourselves in spiritual concept of life by practice of devotional service, uh, practically experience devotional service, then the things which happen to our material situation uh, won't disturb us, favorable or unfavorable, doesn't matter. It's not that devotees only get disturbed because something bad happens to them and they lose faith. The devotees also get disturbed and lose faith when good things happen to them. We had a nice, simple devotee he was doing very well, and then he becomes very successful, and then he leaves devotional service. It also, the uh, other side of the coin is there. So really, it doesn't matter distress or happiness. What really matters is how much shelter we have taken of devotional service. That's what is important. Eh? The demigods have a very nice material situation, but it's very difficult for them to practice devotional service. They struggle as a devotees. Um, uh, somebody else uh, maybe has a difficult situation and he does not struggle like Bali Maharaj because he has taken shelter of Krishna consciousness and he has taken shelter of uh, Lord Vamanadev. Answer your question? Any other questions or comments? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, it was very inspiring to know that Bali Maharaja could fully surrender to Lord Krishna. Uh, I am also practicing Krishna consciousness, since, but since it is a material world and the mat uh, Maya is very strong and uh, it is Kali Yuga, it's the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. So, in order to uh, do away with all these problems of Kali Yuga, we chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the great mantra for deliverance. And also we try to avoid offenses while chanting it. We, we recite the ten offenses while chanting the holy names. Uh, to avoid uh, cha the offenses while chanting the holy names. Uh, and we should chant in the association of devotees, it is said in our Shastras. So, I was thinking that because it is a rule formulated by Prabhupada, do, do we get to uh, uh, also have the uh, privilege to hear these ten offenses against the holy names to avoid while Mangal Arati? Because so that I didn't catch the last time. while Mangal Arati can be uh, uh, can the devotees uh, recite the ten of offenses against the holy name because it doesn't take much time also. Yes, of course devotees can recite and if as in, at the moment in the temple we don't recite, you can recite yourself also. It's not... That, uh, they it tell uh, us that but uh, it's in not the association it will be stronger. We feel together and uh, it is not done for a long time. 
it doesn't take long time, but there's few things. Firstly, we are not in the material world, we are in the spiritual world, we are in Sridham Mayapur. So uh, that I think we should also try to remember always that uh, here in Mayapur we are not in the material world, we are in the spiritual okay. world. <laughs> They can even <laughs> recite the Dham offenses, Dham uh, Paradas also, because okay. it is the spiritual world. Dham. Sure, that would be helpful, because not forgetting that we are in the Dham is an uh, offense, and because we are not in the Kali Yuga, we are in the Golden Age of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, because uh, there is a lot of time also. So, uh, if we can remember those two things, uh, and be grateful to Srila Prabhupada uh, for those wonderful opportunities of being able to live in the times of the golden age and be in Sridham Mayapur, then automatically the amount of inattentiveness which causes all the other offenses will be there. However, this is a good suggestion. You can take it up with Ashray Govinda Prabhu. Uh, he is uh, looking after the morning program and if adjustments can be made, then uh, definitely. Many temples do it. It's, it's very nice to recite uh, those things. So. Thank you. For, that Thank will be very inspiring. Also, if a senior devotee can recite it for us, like Janani Vas Prabhu or Pankajanga Prabhu, it will be very inspiring to follow in their footsteps. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Prabhuji. So we will end now. Grantaraj, Srimad Bhagavatam, Ki Jai. Samavada Gora Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Jai Nitai Go Primanandi Hari Hari Bo.